Hello again, it's Dan, and what I have for you today is another review, and it's actually my first review in vertical format. And the reason I'm doing this review in vertical format is because I want to do a review of these pants here. Yeah, these are the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex pants, and I just wanted to do this so, so you can see these babies in their full glory. And you can also see me in my full glory in this, this puffy backpacking suit that you'd actually never wear out in public. You know, you would be caught dead this thing unless you're some, you know, one of these dirt bag backpacking people. That, that's why you're watching this video, I assume. I don't know. But why am I making this video? Well, I searched on YouTube a bit and there really doesn't seem to be many YouTube reviews or any at all of these, these Torrid Apex pants. So I figured I'd put one out there. I'd talk about what it's like to own these uh, for anyone who's interested in them, wants to know what it's like, these pants are like, what it's like to have them, uh, how warm are they, all that. And then maybe you're one of my 10 subscribers that isn't a bot that actually likes to watch my videos. And maybe you're just watching another one of my videos for your entertainment and, and to, to learn a little bit about this stuff. So that's enough of that. Let's get into the review and, and get moving on that. All right. Before I get deep into the review, what I want to do first is discuss why I got these pants. Because I think it's important to understand why you get a piece of gear. Uh, maybe other people are thinking about it and they want to know, why did somebody get this? Why would somebody get this? And personally, I just really like to consider that that too much. That's just me overanalyzing. But anyways, I got these pants because I was looking for a really lightweight pair of insulated pants to wear when I'm camping or backpacking. And I just want something light and compact to pull over whatever pants I'm wearing. I went around, I looked at down pants, I looked at like fleece pants, I looked at some synthetic insulation pants. And these really hit the mark in terms of price and weight and all that. Down pants where most of them are just kind of a little too heavy and probably too warm. There are some other Climate Shield Apex products out there. I know Nunatech has some, some insulated pants uh, made from Climate Shield Apex. There might be a couple others I'm, I don't know about. But I got these because there was that Black Friday sale from Lane Equipment and the price was right. And I just decided it'd be a good time for me to try out uh, some of these Climate Shield Apex pants and try out different different thicknesses of denier and see see how I like those real lightweight denier fabrics for, for camping and backpacking uses. Speaking of denier, I got these pants in the 10 denier Coyote Brown gold fabric. Yeah. And, and then on the interior, I've got the, the 7 denier Midnight Blue fabric. I went with these fabric choices rather than any of the 20 denier because I wanted to see how light I could go and I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of durability. Now, some people get all seven denier for, for Enlightened Equipment's products uh, and, they, and they say it works okay for, for their usages. Uh, but I decided I wanted to get the 10 denier. For one, I wanted a tad bit more durability and I also wanted to get the extra wind resistance that comes from that. On the Climate Shield, on uh, Enlightened Equipment's website, they have the they list the different cubic feet per minute uh, rating of their fabrics. That's basically how much wind is going to pass through the fabric. Uh, and, and so the 20 denier fabric has about one CFM cubic feet per minute, and, and that's almost windproof. This 10 denier fabric has about 10 CFM, and then that's that's pretty wind resistant. And then the seven denier fabric has 35 CFM. And that's sort of pushing the upper limits of what can be classified as wind resistant. I've seen that the upper upper limit of wind resistance is 40, 50, somewhere around there. And so if you're looking for something wind resistant, the closer to one, the more wind resistance going to be. There are some fleeces out there that are near 100 or even higher in terms of wind resistant. And those are basically leaking like a sieve if there's a lot of wind. So I went with the 10 denier on the outside, the 7 denier on the inside. And another thing I wanted with this 10 denier is a tad bit of durability. So it's kind of hard to tell if it's durable when you first get this product to tell the difference between the 7 denier and the 10 denier. But if you fold up the fabric, if you kind of fold the fabric over itself, roll it over itself, rub it together, you do that with the 10 denier, and then you take the 7 denier and do that, and then maybe tug on it a little bit, you know, vertically, horizontally, diagonally, all that. That's kind of when you can really feel the subtle differences between that 7 denier and the 10 denier. 
Now, 20 denier, that, that's going to be noticeably more durable than both of these. This jacket right here, this Patagonia down sweater, is made from about a 20 denier fabric. I think it's actually 22 denier technically uh, from, from when this was made. I've owned this jacket for about nine years, and the 20 denier has held up pretty well. It's sort of like the gateway drug for ultralight fabrics, 20 denier, because when you start looking, oh, I want to get some lighter weight stuff, a lot of those jackets tend to be made of, of 20 denier, and so it, it really is an entry-level entry level ultralight fabric, and it does last a long time. This has lasted me quite well, if you, quite a long time if you take care of it. But for these pants, I wanted to push the limits a little bit more on the fabrics I'm using, so that's why I have the 7 denier and the 10 denier combination. We'll see how they hold up. I think that's about enough of me rambling on about these the, these pants. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go walk walk outside a little bit. And it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, if not a little bit colder. And I'm going to see how this how this feels with just the pants pants on. And then maybe I'll throw some pants underneath and see how that feels and how warm it is. And I'll get back to you. And then when I get back to you, I'll talk about the fit as well and, and tell you how it feels under under different types of of undergarments and pants. I'll see you later. Hello, I'm going for a walk. It's about 20 degrees. I freeze my hand off as I'm holding this, but I don't know. These pants are keeping keeping me warm enough. I'm probably not warm enough in the torso. Uh, so that's affecting blood flow to my legs, but but I'm warm enough while I'm moving around. Saying so, yeah, I got the got the whole pants on and all that. But <laughs> you know, it's it's working out all right. We'll see what it's like uh, after a few more minutes. So I just got done hiking for about a half hour in, in this get up with the, with the Torrid Apex pants here. And I have to say, when I was moving around, when I was going at about a moderate activity level, I was staying pretty warm and that was okay. I did stop for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes in the middle of the, the walk to just kind of let myself get cold. And I did get cold all over because this, this get up is more of an active, uh, active clothing than, than standing around clothing. But overall, I was pretty happy with, with staying warm while moving while just wearing uh, a pair of shorts under here. I don't have any sort of long base layer. So that was sort of my rudimentary test at about 20 degrees. And later I'm gonna come back out when it's colder and layer up and just kind of stand outside for a while and just <laughs> see what that's like. We'll see. So it's about 16, 17 degrees. And I've been sitting here on this park park bench for like 20 minutes as you can see park bench got my apex pants on and I'm just testing out how warm I stay when it's 16 or 17 degrees and what's cold are right now are my nose my toes and my back that's been contacting this cold bench uh, <laughs> but overall I'm, I'm not too bad my legs I have a pair of jogger pants on and and the apex pants and my legs are pretty warm uh, the, the inside of the pants are still kind of warm. The outside is, is cold, as you would expect, but they're insulating okay. Just sitting here being static with, with just a pair of, of jogger jogger pants underneath. So, so that's good. I'm, I'm happy with that, but I've had enough of this. It's been peaceful, you know. <laughs> it, is, it is peaceful out here right now, but, but I think I'm going to go go back inside. Talk to you later. I'm back in the figurative hot seat and kind of literal because I was just walking around outside. I'm a little bit toasty, built up a little bit, a little bit of heat, moisture. But, but anyways, what I want to talk about here besides hot seats is, is the fitment of these pants and, and how they fit with a variety of different types of pants underneath them. Because that's the intent. They're built a little bit larger so you can fit things underneath. So I've got a variety of pants here. First off, what we've got is just, just regular pair of shorts, you know, nothing special. And, and yeah, plenty of room under here, although they were a little bit tight in the, the upper area, the, the, the seat, the, the, the crotch area. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, another, another pair of pants I threw on here. Here's some thin, thin long underwear, base layer, uh, smart wool, 150 weight for all the, for all the stack geats out there. These, these fit perfectly fine underneath it. What else I got here? Uh, ah, yeah, here's a pair of jogging pants. And these jogging pants, they're gonna be about the thickness of a, 
uh, fleece pants, jogging pants. Uh, you know, maybe they can simulate uh, thicker long johns and base layer. I don't know, but these fit underneath it pretty well. And then here's what you might probably be using in the field as well. Here's some hiking pants and the green ones, the darker ones, these are just dedicated straight hiking pants. And then these, these tan ones are your, you know, your, your zip off beauties here. The, 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 the dad pants, which, which I, I like the dad pants. I'm not a dad, but I like the dad pants. Versatility, man, versatility, right? So anyways, either of these, the, the, the green pants, they fit, they fit better underneath. These ones definitely, they're baggier, they're, they're wider, so it was good to, to, to try these on and see how they fit. And they do fit, but there's a little less room. So if you're going to have baggier and thicker hiking zip-off pants, you know, it might be, a little bit, might be a little bit tighter fit underneath. So that's just a variety of pants for you and how they fit. Now the other thing I wanted to discuss was the fitment. These, what I have is the size medium in 32 inch inseam. The size medium is recommended for waist sizes 34 to 37. My waist size is 33, so that I decided to size up because I would be wearing these over pants. It'd be a good idea to size up and, and, and allow me to, uh, to, for whatever pants to fit underneath it. Overall, there's plenty of room to fit pants underneath it, a variety of different kinds of pants. The one area where it's a little bit tight is, is the seat area, the upper area. And, and especially in the, in, in the crotch area, okay? Just gonna say, I hope I'm not violating any YouTube content policies, I don't know, whatever. Maybe I should test that out, take my shirt off, see, really test the limits, okay, that's enough. Um, okay, I was talking about how they fit and where they're a little tight. Yeah, they're a little tight in, in the upper area, in the seat, in, in, the, in the waist, in the crotch area. And it's not so much so that, that I can't wear them, if I am wearing pants underneath and moving around, I do notice that tightness. If I'm wearing the pants and I'm just standing around, it's not really that big of an issue. It's not a deal breaker. So that's that they fit overall pretty well. Uh, if, if you're on the upper end of the size range, I probably recommend sizing up with these in, in my experience. They're, they're working for me with my 33 inch waist and the recommended 34 to 37 inch. But if you are in that upper end, I would, I would probably size up. As you can see, I'm sitting down now and shooting in horizontal widescreen mode because I'm at the point in the video where I'm starting to ask myself questions. Questions like, why am I basically doing free marketing for a company that's given me nothing and I pay for the product? Why is this video getting so long? What am I even doing? What is I gonna talk about next? I don't, I don't even know anymore. But let's forget about all that and let's get to an important, important uh, topic. What is the temperature range these pants can be used in? Well, first of all, let's mention that Enlightened Equipment uses the two ounce Apex in their 50 degree quilts and sleeping bags. So one can reasonably assume that these are going to keep you warm while static at, at 50 degrees. Well, that's going to vary. I think pants work a little bit differently than a sleeping bag. Um, I would say that a similar level of insulation of the pants is going to keep you warmer at a lower range. Just in my experience with wearing, you know, eight, these Apex pants, fleece pants, wearing down garments, I, th I think the, the level of warmth for a sleeping bag is going to translate to a little bit lower temperature when it's put, put into clothing. Now, in my personal experience, I've used these around my apartment at about 60 degrees. You know that in the winter time, the coldest you get up in the morning. My apartment's about coldest it's going to be all day. I don't know the exact temp because my thermostat. I don't have a thermostat, and my apartment probably doesn't meet code. But that's a different story. So let's. It's about sixty degrees, and I can just kind of sit around, lay around, and it it keeps me warm. If I start moving, if I start cleaning or making cooking food. I start to get a little bit overheated and they get clammy and, and moist inside. And it's just kind of like, well, uh, I, I shouldn't be wearing these in my apartment when it's <laughs> 60 degrees. As you can see in this video, I wore these while walking around at a moderate activity level at 20. I sat in the park bench with a pair of joggers underneath in the mid teens and my legs were able to stay warm. I could feel warmth on the inside. So they were still insulating. So in those conditions, I stayed warm. I can imagine in if you're static with just the pants in the 40s, 
maybe even the 30s, your legs are going to stay warm as long as the rest of your body is layered properly. I don't know. It's going to vary. And that's the thing. At the end of the day, how warm these pants are going to keep you is going to depend on your activity level, your layering, your own personal body's warmth meter, if you're bald, if you don't have hair. I don't know. So <laughs> there's going to be a number of things that are going to affect what sort of temperature ranges these, these can be used in. I would say, in my experience, with, with layering, I can use these down into the teens and then without layering, I could probably be comfortable in them up to 50 degrees, maybe a little bit warmer. Uh, if, if, if I'm moving around, that's a whole different world of possibilities because if I had a pair of long johns, these pants, and, and just say a rain shell, uh, or like something, snow pants or something, that's, <laughs> I'll probably be warm down to zero. But that also depends on what is your usage case going to be? What are, you, what are you going to use these for? In my case, I bought these for being static in camp and while sleeping to add an extra layer of warmth for me while sleeping, if, if need be, or when I'm standing around in camp when the sun goes down and in the morning before the sun comes up. So I think these pants are going to work great for me when I'm in camping in temperatures that are going to be in the 20s and 30s, uh, maybe even teens. And these will work to, to, to provide an extra layer of warmth. You could use these as an active layer. I wouldn't do that personally because they're going to trap a lot of heat. And if you're active, that heat's going to build up. It's going to get real real clammy and, and this fabric gets gets pretty sticky and, and all that on the inside when you do build up a lot of activity and moisture. So I'm personally not going to use it for that, but maybe you can. Maybe that's your thing. I don't know. So I think this video has gone long enough, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I'll just say these uh, Enlightened Equipment Toward Apex pants, I like them so far. Good warmth for weight, good cost, all that. Uh, it can be used in diff some different conditions. So I like them so far. And if you like this video, you like what I've done, you do the whole like, subscribe, you can comment, ask questions, tell me tell me how, how I look in my uh, backpacking puffy suit. I don't know, do whatever. And then maybe if you're in light equipment, you run across this, you should send me a gift certificate for all the free advertising I'm doing. I'd appreciate it. Okay, that's enough. I'll see y'all later.